John, first of all, can we just start with a injury update? Any ins or outs? Hey, just the James Forrest one will be the, the main kind of talking point for us this week. Um, so he's he's come on reasonably well in the week. Uh, we got a bit of work into him yesterday. Had a bit more of a down day today um, just to recover. And then we'll have a go at him tomorrow just in terms of where he's at. So it'll be a very late call, but just with the position we're in and, uh, and the magnitude of the game, we'll give it for as long as we possibly can and make a decision that late. Is it a relief for James, I suppose, in the sense that worst case he maybe only misses this game? Yeah, he's not going to have much time. You know, even if he doesn't make this game, then it'll not be it'll not be too long out. So we're hopeful. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, we'll get as much work into him over the, the coming days, and then we'll make a decision, even if it's you know late on Saturday or, or into Sunday. Um, John, I don't know if you've seen Borna Barisic's comments from this morning at all. He's suggesting that you are being disrespectful and maybe talking nonsense by suggesting that Scott, uh, Celtic are still the best team on their day? Yeah, well, that's a matter of opinion. You know, my, my take on it was, and again, it's, I've seen little comments about this in terms of people take part of the comment and it's careless. You know, people go and make a story and a headline out of taking the, the comment out of context. You know, I was referring to um, us going into a cup game and on our day we can still be the best performing team in the country because we've got that level in us. So, that's purely what it is. And several times along the, uh, in my time there in the last few weeks, I've commented on Rangers thoroughly deserving to win the league because they've been the most consistent team. They've racked up the most points. They've been more consistent performances. So I've shown full respect to Rangers for what they've done. I'm entitled to say that on any given day, especially going into a cup tie against Rangers, I fancy to be on a day, come out on top. And that, that's purely what it is. You know, people sometimes take a small part of that statement uh, and touch, twist it and turn it into whatever they want to suit them in an argument. And that's that's careless for me. So, you know, to bring about clarity of that, Rangers deserve to be the, ch the champions this season because they've been more consistent than us. You know, but come a cup game, if we hit top gear and we can perform well, I fancy is to, to be able to go and win the game. John, uh, Celtic obviously with a scintillating 6-0 victory against Livingston last time out. How close... Do you feel Celtic are being in terms of getting back to their their best? Yeah, I think we're close. I think performance-wise, we've been good. You know, much more consistent. Um, you know, dominating games, we're having lots of play, creating a lot of chances, and not giving too much up in, in their own box, in their own goal. So there's lots of positives there. But again, it'll be a tough game. You know, a cup match. You can't make any mistakes. You have to be, you know, getting into the game and, and hitting top form. So. It's promising for us. It'll give us confidence, you know, going off the back of the last game and the little run we've had. Uh, we've got scoring goals and we're, we've been in good performances. Players are finding the form as well. So, you know, it leads to a very exciting game. But we know that, you know, especially going to Ibrox and, uh, and the magnitude of the game, that we have to, you know, make sure we're all concentrated, we're all doing our jobs, you know, and hopefully we come out uh, with a very good performance and result. I know James Forrest came off. It was a stiffness, I think, in his hip and his back and, and maybe his hamstring. Can you give us just a little bit more clarity exactly on on the exact nature of, of the injury and what specifically needs to clear up? Well, basically what's happened is he's, he's had a, a general stiffness across his back, um, which then leads to, and I've seen it with many players, it leads to general stiffness around the hamstrings. Um, so again, we didn't want to risk that because again, if you push it too hard and you pull a hamstring properly, you can miss a long period of time. Um, James has obviously come back in, he's been great, it's great to have him back. So again, hopefully we got it quick enough. There was minor symptoms there early in the week, um, but we've managed to get a bit of work into him this week. Um, not the same as the other players, but again, we just have to monitor if he's in a good enough place to be able to go into the game and perform. Um, so again, as I said, we'll keep our fingers crossed, we'll make the decision as late as we, as we have to and give him the best chance to be available for the game. From a personal point of view, John, does this feel like the, the biggest football match of your career coming up this weekend? Um, probably have. every game you've kind of looked at recently has been a bit like that, you know, in terms of approaching the next game. Again, not knowing really what's beyond that. Uh, and that's just been my take on it. You know, I'm not going to put too much pressure on myself or the team. It's about performance. It's about being clear. Sometimes the emotion of these games overrides, you know, clarity in your judgments and stuff. So... We have to be clear in terms of how, what the game means and what we have to do to perform in that game. And hopefully that brings, you know, a positive result. So you'll still, still be calm in it. You know, we can't be, you know, burning up too much emotion uh, too long before the game. Hopefully we can, you know, have that motivation later approaching the game so that we can use it to our advantage and, and come out with, you know, real intent uh, to, to go and make a mark in the game. Cheers, John. 
John, you've said that you know you've been happy with performances the last couple of times against Rangers, but just not quite managed the result. How much, in some ways, is Sunday an opportunity to lay down a marker to Rangers to let them know that Celtic are still there? Yeah, I think it's always works. I think even when we've dominated in previous seasons, Rangers have probably had that mentality. They want to show themselves to show that you know we're here and we want to compete. You know, it's hurt us uh, as much as anyone in terms of losing an early title this year again to Rangers. So again, when opportunities came up like this, especially in a cup match, it's about how you go into the game and how you then you know present yourself. And if that means laying it down a marker, fine. But it's about the performance. Massive uh, part of that on Sunday will be very much about the results. So even if performance isn't perfect, we want to show the mentality and willingness to go and work and run. And if we need to grind it out, we'll try and grind it out. Um, but certainly the outcome of the game after that, it presents itself differently in terms of how people might see you know, the, the gap or whatever they, they might say about Celtic and Rangers. You know, we know we've underperformed this season. Rangers have been very good. Um, but we want to make sure that, you know, over time that we make sure people realise that, you know, the gap isn't maybe as big as people may think. Someone that's been become a part of the plans has been Stephen Welsh, who we've just spoken to, and he talked about how influential you've been um, on his career and, and of late on his confidence as well. What is it that you see in Stephen um, in terms of his playing going forward, what he can become? Again, biggest one for Stevens probably is not just ability, but mentality. Um, you know, I've seen it here with, with numerous players. You know, you have to have a strong mentality to play at Celtic. Um, you have to be very stable, you know, and be able to control your emotion. And he does that extremely well. Um, and being a centre-back, he's one who probably for a period of time, even for you guys, you probably see him in, or he plays in games and he doesn't catch the eye. He doesn't make too many mistakes, but that's a good thing. You know, he's, he doesn't make, do things that always makes headlines. But for a centre-back... That's a good thing. It means he's he's doing his job. He's not making mistakes. He's not catching now for the wrong reasons. And he's just slowly but surely got better and better. And that comes with experience, you know, getting more exposure to, to the games, getting comfortable in the environment, you know, make, creating a partnership with Chris Iyer at the moment and John Joe. Um, so he's become more and more comfortable in the environment. But he's the type of guy every day who just pushes himself to better himself. He always wants more information. He'll work ever so hard on the training pitch to improve his game. And I think, you know, that's only uh, come through again because of him. We help him, you know, as coaches, we guide him along that pathway. But players have to take the responsibility themselves to push themselves. And he's did that. And it's no surprise he reached the levels he has because, you know, he had that in his locker. But, you know, terrific for him. Delighted he's committed his future to the club. Uh, you know, he's in a very good place at the moment. He recognised that, you know, credit to him and his, his agents and the guys in terms of the deal. It was a very simple deal to do because they see the big picture. You know, they see what the club's provided them, the opportunity, the magnitude of it means so much to him. You know, it was a very, very easy deal to get done, and that's good for both Stephen and ourselves. Another key player that's coming to the end of his time with Celtic is Scott Brown. Is there a feeling in, in the squad as well that, you know, you want to make progress in the competition to make sure that he bows out with a, with a trophy in his hand? Yeah, it'd be nice, and I think Scott would be certainly deserving of that. But again, again, we don't want to be too emotional and make that the, the pure control. If we can use it as part of our motivation, then great, you know, we'll do that. But, you know, certainly Scott's had a really successful time here. You know, even currently, his current form, I think he's playing very well, doing an excellent job in his, in his role in the team. And as he always does as a captain, you know, but um, we just have to concentrate on the team. The team's the most important thing. You know, it can't be about Scott Brown. That'll be, you know, beyond that, it'd be great for him. But we have to concentrate on what wins as a game and that's the most important thing. Hi, John. Um, Patrick Kamala, is your way to New York? Yes, yeah, so Patrick's currently probably close to finalising the deal to go there. Um, again, it's an opportunity that came up for him and, you know, for both parties, it was a good deal. So, uh, you know, if, again, I have a good relationship with Patrick, you know, spent a lot of time with him. Um, he's a very hardworking boy and, you know, we wish him all the best when that, they get, that gets finalised. So I would imagine in the next, you know, few days that something will come out with finalising that deal. I wonder if she's spoken a bit about Lee recently. Um, the other day, Ollie McBurney's pretty much ruled out for the Euros, you'd think. Do you think the next few weeks, if he really knuckles down, he could can get in that squad? Yeah, he could. And again, it's sometimes with Lee, opportunities because of the, the quality we have in the squad. Um, it's not always easy to get everyone game time. You know, and, and very much for Scotland, they would love a Lee Griffiths firing. But for us, we have to continue to make the right decisions for each game. You know, and Lee's trained, he's not missed a session, you know, in the last period of time for as long as I can remember. He's trained every day. He's working hard. Game time's been hard to come by. Um, down to just decisions and games or decision getting into games. So he just has to keep working and make himself available, you know, and then we'll see what develops over the coming weeks. And then Steve will have a, a decision to make on that. 
one guy who is playing for you is uh, David Turnbull. Do you think he could still force his way in? Again, definitely. He's, he's in good form. Um, he's playing very well. He's been very influential on the team for ourselves, and he's made himself an important player on our team. Again, Steve's, you know, it's probably a position where he does have a lot of options um, in terms of with Scotland, they've got good, good players in those areas of the pitch. So again, it's, it's David can only concentrate on what he can affect, and that's here. You know, in terms of how he trains every day, how he goes in and performs in the games, and all he can do is pose the question to Steve, and he'll be the one to to make that any other time.